Dear students, today we are going to start with our new module and that module is intersection layouts. So far in the previous interactions and up to till the last one what we have done for roughly around 8 hours we have been discussing about the alignment design and in that alignment design we covered both of the aspects that is horizontal alignment and vertical alignment and towards the end we talked about the alignment coordination and the practical issues which are faced in the alignment fixation or whether they have been fixed then what are the things which have been left over and are creating problem in terms of a safe and a smooth movements by the road users are the things which we have seen by way of certain photographs and diagrams. Now today we are going to start with the intersections and when we have to look at the layouts we also need to know that what are the various types and what are the various shapes of different type of intersections. So, in this direction we are going to move forwards. So, before we start looking at the types let us see that what exactly is an intersection. Now, when we talk about a road in terms of a say a link like this. So, this is being defined as link and there is a possibility that there is a cross link which is coming in this form. Now, this point of intersection this is what exactly is being defined as a junction or a intersection for these two roads. Now, this may be more than two roads or there may be a many many more roads which are getting just merged at a location and diverging from that particular point. So, when we are talking about this and when we say that there is a small such form of intersection where the traffic is moving in different directions like this that is a two way traffic is there. Now, all of these approaches say we can say this is 1, 2, 3 and 4. So, there are 4 approaches in this particular case. So, also, so, what these approaches are being defined they can also be defined as an intersection lag. So, these are the roads which are radiating out of the point of intersection of the two roads with respect to their alignment. Now, these intersections when we are talking about this one where we have seen here the both of the roads are at the same level and when all the roads are at the same level it means we are talking about a at grade intersection. So, that is one type of a thing which may happen or there is a possibility that we have a road and there is a another road which comes like this so there is a level difference so this road is going at the bottom and we can say that this is coming up to this point and this one is not there so the traffic is moving on this road like this whereas we have a traffic moving at the ground level also so this is ground level and this is a elevated situation at this crossing and that is where they can be defined as a grade separated intersections. Now, these intersections can also be defined in different other forms like they can be defined as uncontrolled or priority controlled intersections. If you remember we talked about this type of an intersection when we discussed the side distances at intersections. So, if we are talking about uh, this sort of a condition then that is uh, probably an uncontrolled intersection as such, but if you are talking about a priority intersection then there are certain controls which are going to be there which are like this. So, there can be a, a stop line in all of these directions where the traffic is just moving into the intersection. So, there is a priority control type of a thing which is there. The another way of having a classification is saying that they are time separated. Now, when we say the things are time separated at an intersection it means we are basically talking about the signalized situation where this preference has been given to a particular type of a movement from an approach and that is how the safeties are being 
uh, ensured on that particular intersection because whatever this total area is there if we talk about this area this is going to be a quite big area and if it is not being controlled then there are always the possibilities of having congestion there are always possibilities of having uh, chances of hazardous interactions in this particular area and that is not going to be a fruitful thing. So, we have to eliminate or at least reduce the number of conflict points, the area which is going to be there behind which the conflicts can be there. So, one way of doing it is that we go for a signalization or there may be a space separated situation. So, space separated movements if they are there like this can also be one case where we are talking about an grid separated. So, this is an space separated condition or we can also think in terms of channelization which creates the spaces or intersection and thus allows the uh, various specific maneuvers of the traffic to happen safely and smoothly. So, there are different things which may happen when you are talking about an intersection and when you are going to uh, consider those in terms of or as a part of total road alignment. Now, let us start with the first category which is at grade intersections. Now, when we say at grade intersections, it means all of the roadways they are joining or they are crossing at the same level. And when we are talking about that all of these things are happening at the same level, that means there are all type of things, all type of maneuvers which are there like merging, diverging, crossing, weaving, anything which is happening is happening in this particular area. So, if we say that we have a say circle and the traffic is moving in this form, so whatever traffic is getting here can go in this way and can get out here or it continues in this form and get out here or it continues in this form and then can get out here. So, there are different things which are happening, there is a merging, there is a diverging, there is a weaving, there is a maybe a crossing because the traffic is also coming from here. So, all these type of uh, things may happen at any of uh, uh, that intersection which we may be considering, we have to look at that. Now, when we are looking at these at grade intersections, then they can be classified by either shape or their geometrics or the type of controls which have been exercised on it. And in the subsequent slides, we are going to look at these and at the same time when we are talking about these different shapes or geometrics or controls, we will also see that, that whatever so far we have studied in terms of uh, the provisions which needs to be made on a roadway, whether they are there or not. So, let us start with the first thing that is why shapes. Now, when we are talking about a shape, then based on the number of approach lags which are there, we may have an intersection which is a three legged intersection or a four legged intersection or a multiple lag intersection. And when we look at this three legged or four lagged or in the case of a multiple lagged also, the shapes which can just come out of those particular orientations of the lags can be T junctions or Y junctions. So, if you see here, we may have this lag 1, lag 2 and lag 3. And they have been placed to this, we have one road which is having a traffic moving in this direction, there is another road having a traffic in this direction and then there is a possibility of having turns in this form. Okay. So, these are the things which are possible in this case. So, it is a three legged T junction or T intersection. Now, one another thing which you can note here is that when I am moving from this direction to this direction for the same T junction, there are certain things which are happening on that intersection area. Now, first one is being defined as a unchannelized T intersection. Now, unchannelized means there is nothing being utilized in such a manner that whatever the maneuvers which we have just talked about that is there can be merging, diverging, crossing, weaving etcetera, they have not been separated out and uh, the that particular space which is a common space of this intersection area is being utilized by all of these vehicles for all of these purposes. But if they you found that there is a traffic which is continuously increasing, so you started with this uh, first uh, step uh, or a first level of uh, uh, the provision of an intersection, then this can be 
defined as level 2, where what you find is a flaring has been done on this side or the so, so what is happening is the traffic is coming get into it and then goes out of the this system and similarly the traffic comes here and moves here and then gets into the bigger system. So, that is uh, the type of uh, thing being provided. The reason here is that means there is going to be a lot of turning traffic here and if we are going continuously with an unchannelized situation then that may create more of the delays and that the movements are not going to be more systemized and orderly in nature. So, this flaring is helping us out. Now, when we are doing this flaring then this side is trying to actually providing an area where the vehicles can slow down and this one is providing an area where the vehicles can accelerate to get into the main highway. So, you have a main highway like this, but still one thing which you can see that if the traffic which is coming from this direction and desires to go right or the traffic which is coming from the upper side and desires to go the other right direction that means here there are area on which there are always a possibility of having the conflicts. So, you have the conflict in terms of like the turning in this form or this turning can be in this form or there is any straight movement or there is any straight movement on this. So, there are possibilities that the things are going to have issues at different locations. Now, if we want to control that then the one way of doing it is to go into the channelization and this is what is being talked here to different type of things have been shown. So, what we can see is that the traffic which is coming here a separate turning lane has been provided and from here the traffic which is coming that lane is not being provided separately, but uh, uh, there is a, a space being done in that and there is maybe not much of the traffic which is taking a left turn. So, no such provision is being made on this particular side. Uh, when the traffic is coming from this direction and going in this form. Similarly, this can be another way of providing. So, you have this type of an island being provided inside. So, once we talk about these islands then obviously, we have to see that what should be the type design of these islands, how what should be the size of these islands, how their noses have to be taken care of, what should be the widths which needs to be provided on this roadway. There are so many elements which we are going to talk successively. Now, in the bottom one what we have is another shape which is Y junction and again Y junctions means you have the unchannelization here and there is a channelization in these two cases. So, this is a more of a symmetrical type of thing and this is a pure Y and where the traffic can take this direction and can, can go this way or can, can go straight, but the traffic which has to go and the uh, right direction is going to take a U turn here. So, there is a possibility of U turning at this point and if that is the case then we have to see that whether we can make it further smoother and can we provide it something like this as a gap here. So, that the U turn can take place here or rest of the things are happening at other locations. So, we are trying to segregate those crossing movements which otherwise can be there. Here what you can see is a one such example where the traffic is coming from uh, this direction then it clearly tells by way of use of arrows that you are going to take okay, left turn or you are going to take right turn and then at this one there is an island which is uh, basically a flush island being provided by way of markings and the traffic which is to go is this way can come in this form and then can move it there. Similarly, here also the arrow is being defined. So, it says that if you have to go this direction you should be in this particular lane, edge markings are there. So, everything is being done perfectly that is the way we can have uh, say uh, another 20 junctions. This is another type design, but the same, but not much of the controls have been exercised here, though there are some spaces being definitely defined for the uh, movement of the pedestrians. Uh, from one side to the another side. So, this is uh, means you have to see that what are the requirements accordingly the things needs to be provided at that location. This is another case where the flaring is being done as you can see that uh, the section has been flared here. So, there is probably going to have uh, more of the movements in this direction. So, uh, uh, if we talk about uh, 
this directional movement because uh, uh, this is from uh, the outside India. So, they have this type of a turning and when this turning is there, so they are getting into it. So, the right turning lane has been provided here, but uh, on this side there is probably no requirement of having a such type of thing. So, what you are going to do is that this traffic goes in this way or this goes in this particular manner. At the same time there is an island here being provided and this island has been provided with the chevrons and the uh, sideline markings just in front of it. So, as to protect it as well as to define the pathway for different type of maneuvers. Here we can see that this is an unchannelized situation, but is staggered. So, the things are getting staggered here in the sense that uh, you have to if you are coming from this side you are probably going to take a turn then maneuver and go into this one and similarly if you are coming from here then you are coming this way and getting into this. So, you are taking the different type of maneuvers you are accelerating you are weaving and then you are uh, say so all those things acceleration deacceleration and weaving everything may be happening in this particular area. And when this type of thing happens in the traffic which is coming in this direction or in this direction this is also going to have problem in terms of the interactions. So, we have to take care of this and depending on whether what type of maneuvers are there what the type of channelization has to be adopted here. This is a case of a Y junction where what you can see is very beautifully different uh, islands have been provided. So, you, there is one, two, three, four, five. So, all these things have been done. There are different markings which are very clearly being defined as you can see the chevrons along with the nose of these islands are there. And once it is being done then it is allowing the traffic to take a demarcated route. So, uh, they know that which particular segment of the total carriageway being provided can is to be utilized for what type of a movement. So, once this is very clearly being defined then the type of uh, or the possibilities of uh, any uh, such interaction which may cause delays, which may cause congestion or which may cause hazardous situation to occur they have been eliminated or reduced. So, this is the another thing needs to be taken care of. So, we have to talk about the various types of islands. So, islands which we are looking here as a part of channelization. So, you will find that there are uh, the diversion islands, there are directional islands. So, there are pedestrian refuse islands, all of these type of islands are there and successively we are going to talk about these type designs too. But if you look at this photograph then what you found is that there is no such thing has been provided maybe because the uh, traffic uh, intensity in this particular area is not high. But one thing one issue which is there is the visibility because if you are taking turns like this or any form then these particular bushes or these trees they are creating the issue with respect to the visibility and this may cause a problem here. So, we have to take care of uh, this type of an aspect also uh, that is what we have discussed previously as a part of uh, alignment or as a part of side distances and that has to be taken care of. Now, here we are going to talk about or look at the four lagged uh, intersections which are again at grade and uh, this can be one which is defined as plus or this can be one which can be defined as x or they are basically cross and scissor shapes which can be there. But if nothing is being done on the intersection area or on the approaches to the intersection area, so we always have this unchannelized type of a thing. But then it transforms into a flared one say if we have a turning traffics like this. So, those turning traffics have been taken care of uh, by way of the flaring. So, this is a flare being done here. And when we say this flare, so this is for slowing down and this is for uh, uh, accelerating and similarly this is for slowing down and this one is for accelerating because we are going to merge into a traffic which is moving at a higher speed on the main highway or where we are coming from uh, highway towards the side road then we are at a higher speed we have to reduce our speed to the speed of that side road. So, that is why we may have these type of uh, flared areas where this possibilities can are there. Now, what you can see here with respect to these two 
diagram says that the way the flaring is being done or way the turning movements have been provided they are a bit different from each other. In this case what has happening is that there is a road which is going just parallel. So, this is a parallel design, but this one is a, a simple taper and then the curvature is being done. So, this is defined as a direct taper and a direct connectivity for the turning movements. But still when we have done this flaring and we have taken care of uh, these turning movements, uh, we have not taken care of uh, the segregation of those movements and that is what is being done when we go for a channelization. So, this is a part channelization where this is a full channelization. So, part channelization because from this particular side of the road probably not much of the traffic is there and that is where there is no requirement of doing it. But when you are looking at it, so it may be a possibility that both of the roads, so that is road A and road B, they are of uh, same specifications. So, that is the reason why it has been done. Here in this guide, which you can see is a Caesar type of a design and then this Caesar type of a design, the traffic can move in different directions. The only thing is that this is the conflict area which is going to be there and uh, uh, we have to see whether this conflict area can be reduced by way of either providing some sort of say island or some sort of a circle or something else. But that sort of a requirement can always be there when you have the parallel roads and then the traffic has to move from one side to the another side. Okay. So, this is another example where the cross uh, roads are there, but then what you can see is that the type of more pavement markings which are being done along with si the, uh, the islands which are there. So, we, when we look at it, what you found is the traffic is being allowed say to move in this direction or the traffic is being allowed to go straight or there if there is a requirement and the traffic is going to uh, move uh, from here also in this form. So, everything is being defined in a perfect manner. There is a stop line, there is a path which is being provided for the pedestrians to uh, cross from one side to the another side. There are islands which are being provided so as to segregate the type of movements. So, this type of a perfect design is actually what we are interested in when we move towards further and when we finish up this particular module. And this is a case where uh, the unchannelized situation is there. So, uh, this can be a maybe a local area and for this local area the traffic is just purely local and therefore, there is no requirement of going for those channelizations. As you can see, there are certain habitations on these sides, but not much of the traffic, not much of the population in this area and therefore, this channelization can be omitted here. Here you can see another such design where uh, a sort of an innovative design is being shown and uh, in this innovative design, uh, what you find is that they have tried to provide an unrestricted flows for different maneuvers. Say, and this is from outside and uh, and uh, this is culminating into this another photograph where uh, the it is being taken from the top. So, you get some idea that how the things are happening here. So, what you found is that there is a traffic which is uh, uh, requiring to go say from this particular side to this uh, left hand side. So, a uh, space has been provided in this particular manner or separate lane has been provided, but if there is a traffic which is going straight then uh, this is the way which is happening and if there is a traffic which is coming all along from the left or right hand direction movement. So, there is a for them whatever the uh, right turning lane is there for us actually we will be if we are looking from the other side then it will become a left turning lane for us. So, if I start looking at from this side then we can see that this is left turning situation. So, that segregation which is being done, so uh, whatever the total conflicts which otherwise could have been in this area have been now reduced and few of the things have been taken aback. So, the driver is not facing all of the conflicts at one location that is what is the beauty of that design. Then another thing which can be there is as like we said the staggered conditions can be there. Now, if you see that this is a, a traffic going this way, there is a traffic which is a say maybe going in this direction or there is a traffic going in this direction or this way or this way. 
it all depends from uh, what for, for what particular condition of the driving situations we are looking at it. But the point here is that when this type of movements are happening, so when the traffic is going in this and when there is a traffic which is uh, going say like this one. So, this can go in this form or this can go here or this is the way the traffic is getting in. So, different conflict points are going to be there as being shown here and what we found is there is something like 11 conflict points on this side and 11 conflict points on other side. So, when nothing is being done, so these conflicts are going to be there, but as soon as we have tried to make it better. So, what we can see here is that the island has been provided here, there is another island which is getting into a lesser of the width and that is where there is a right turn lane being provided here. Similarly, there is a right turn lane here which is being provided. Now, at this location it can be a control which can be a stop control or a give way control and then the vehicles here they can go in this direction or they go straight and then take this flared area and so as to go out of the system to this particular direction and similarly there can be a straight movement like this and uh, from here also the movement can be there and this movement can come here. So, an island has been provided here also in this way, so that some segregation is going to be there. So, this is a, a culmination in terms of uh, the separation of different movements by way of channelization. Here also what you can see is that uh, again a good design, but what they have done is as you can see at this point there are two vehicles which are standing one after the other and they are waiting for a gap so that they can get into the system. So, as soon as this vehicle is uh, away now they will get an opportunity to merge here. But when you look at these two vehicles and if we assume that they are something like 5 or 6 meters or 7 meters long. So, one is 5 meters say one in 7 meters and with the three gaps at these three levels something like a 15 meters wide median comes out to be there. Along with that then we have the carriageways on this side and the carriageways on this side. We have a turning lane exclusively being provided. So, and all of these things we are going to look at. So, the traffic which is coming from this direction uh, again there is a give way condition. So, a stop line give way conditions everything. Uh, has to be taken care of. So, here there is an stop line, there is an stop line here. So, that is how the perfect arrangement has been made for different type of movement. Say this traffic can go this way or if this traffic has to come and then it has to get into it. So, here again there is an stop line being provided. Okay. But this is another case where not much of the measures have been taken as you can see it is a most open country, lot, not much of the traffic is there, there is not much of uh, development on the sides and the roads which are there they may be say minor roads. So, though they are not also carrying much of the traffic to the main highway and that is where not much emphasis has been given for the development of these intersections. Uh, this is uh, another case which can be there. So, instead of having a, a staggered like this or a staggered like this now we have an skewed condition and in this skewed condition the more or less the condition uh, measures are going to remain the same. What you can see here is that the based on the uh, development in the area there may be a possibility of providing the pedestrian uh, crossing and if we are looking at this. So, there is a, a space being provided for pedestrian crossings in this form in the skewed conditions or their other way that uh, they have been taken with respect to the profile not with respect to the uh, 90 degrees or transverse to the direction of the movement or we may have both of the things which can be looked at in these forms. But at the same time when this is being provided then we are also providing the uh, markings by way of which the vehicles will stop before these uh, pedestrian crossings and they will not be going into the system. So, that is a thing we are looking at and this is the same which being shown here you can again see that. Uh, the proper way of doing all those markings. The, there is a extension of the space for the provision of either the left turning or the right turning depending on the way their vehicles are being driven. And uh, 
Uh, here also what you can see is the pedestrian crossings and the left turning, right turning, the medians etc. has been shown. This is one another type design being defined where you can see is a sort of a dumbbell and uh, because it is an skewed arrangement, so this is uh, the best thing which can be done. You have more space here and you have more space here that is why a dumbbell shape of an intersection has been utilized. So, there is nothing like a very specific guideline that you have to do it in this manner. The intersections and the provisions which are made on that intersections takes shape as per the shape of the uh, the spaces which are going to be available by way of the crossing roads. So, and uh, that is where the innovation is there and that is where we have to see that how this can be done. So, we can stop here, we will be continuing from here uh, further and uh, we will meet in the next uh, class and where we will be taking up uh, further the in various types of layouts which are left or which needs to be looked at when we are talking about at grade intersections. Thank you and bye.